Welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to continue our exploration into Pro Tools, giving you a few other uh, key commands that you can use to navigate inside of Pro Tools, show you how to set up a click track, and also how to set up virtual instruments in Pro Tools. First let me show you a few additional ways to navigate inside of the edit window in Pro Tools. I'm going to do this first by adding a bunch of tracks to my Pro Tools session. So Shift Command N to open the New Tracks dialog box. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to add 15 mono audio tracks and click Create. Now you can see I have a bunch of audio tracks that I've added to my session. If you have a bunch of tracks and you want to scroll up and down, you can either go over here and grab the scroll bar and move this way or you can just use your scroll wheel and that's what I'm doing right now I'm just scrolling back and forth using the scroll wheel on my mouse if you want to scroll left to right you can do the same thing by hitting the shift key and then scrolling so by clicking shift and scrolling on your mouse you can scroll left to right through your material and then by releasing the shift key and just using the scroll wheel, you can scroll vertically up and down. So two easy ways to scroll inside of Pro Tools. There are a number of reasons that we might add a click track to our session. The first reason is that we may want to make sure that our music maintains a steady tempo. The second reason is that we want to make sure that our music lines up with our beats and bars in our counter or here in our beats and bars ruler. So to add a click track to our Pro Tools session, we go up here to the track drop down menu and choose create click track. Once we do that, Pro Tools will add a click track to our session. You can see here's our click track, and here's our click track virtual instrument creating the actual audio click. Now up here in the edit window there is a button that you can click on. That is the metronome on and off button or click on and off button. And what that does is just turn on and off the click in your Pro Tools session. So this is the way that you can turn your click on and off without going to this track over here and muting it. You can just click on the metronome on and off button. So that's how you set up a click track in Pro Tools. Let's go ahead and set up a virtual instrument in Pro Tools. Now there's two ways that we can do this. We can set up a virtual instrument as an insert on an auxiliary input track or we can set up a virtual instrument on an instrument track. So let's start with an auxiliary input and a MIDI track and create a virtual instrument using those two track types. First thing we want to do is add a stereo auxiliary input track and then also an additional MIDI track. So shift command N. I'm going to choose a stereo auxiliary input track, and also one MIDI track, and click OK. So now I have my auxiliary input track, and I also have a MIDI track. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place as an insert on my auxiliary track a virtual instrument. So I do that by clicking right here on this little uh, gray button on the first instance or first slot that we can use an insert. Click on that and I'm going to go to multi-channel plugin and down to instrument. And you can see I have a fair amount of virtual instruments that are accessible or available for me to use. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to choose expand to and I'm going to click on that and once I click on that it will load expand to as a virtual instrument onto my auxiliary input track. Now I have a virtual instrument on an auxiliary input track. 
now I need to set up this MIDI channel to play that virtual instrument. Remember, a MIDI channel only records the MIDI data or instructions that we are programming to be sent to a virtual instrument. So we have to tell this track where to send its data. We can do that right here in our input and output selectors. With those input and output selectors, we can tell it where to look to receive the MIDI data. Right now, I'm just going to select all because I want it to look at all available sources. And then we can select where to send our MIDI data. We can do that by clicking on the output selector. It's got some predefined outputs. And you'll also notice that now it shows expand to instance number one as a viable output for this MIDI data. So we're going to select channel one. And now the output of this MIDI channel is being sent to the Expand 2 module, instance number 1, and MIDI channel number 1. And that happens to be what we are set up right here to receive on our virtual instrument. So now if I want to play this instrument, all I need to do is record enable this track and press on my MIDI keyboard. Turn this down a little bit. So now I am playing my keyboard live and I am sending that MIDI data out to this virtual instrument. The second way we can set up a virtual instrument is by adding a stereo instrument track. So we can go here and select a stereo instrument track, click Create. Remember that we mentioned that an instrument track is a combination track. It has the functionality of both a MIDI track and an auxiliary input track. So it can record and store our MIDI data, and it can also send that MIDI data to the virtual instrument and route that audio, because it has the functionality of an auxiliary input track, to our output so we can hear it. So here, again, we can add our virtual instrument, multi-channel plugin, instrument, and we'll go down to expand to again. Now we have our virtual instrument on this track. Now all we have to do is record enable this track. And this is the MIDI portion of the track. And... and we can play our virtual instrument. So two different ways to achieve the same end goal, which is to set up a virtual instrument and be able to record the MIDI data and play a virtual instrument with that MIDI data. Many of the virtual instruments that come with Pro Tools or that you might purchase from third-party vendors are what you call multi-timbral virtual instruments. What that means is, is that they can play more than one sound source at a time. Expand is a good example of a multi-timbral instrument. You'll see here when I open up Expand, I have four different slots for instruments. So I could put any random particular sound I want in each of these slots by clicking on this disclosure triangle and just adding some sounds. I'm just picking things at random. Now, when I play my synth, it's playing all four of these sounds together. I can turn them off and listen to them individually. We know what this one sounds like, so I've turned off all of them except this string patch. Now I can listen to this dulcimer. And then maybe this uh, soft steel string guitar. However, what I want is for each of these instruments to be able to play their own discrete data. I don't want them to all play the same thing like they are right now. So what I want is for each of these to be on their own separate MIDI channel. 
We discussed MIDI channels in our last module, and as you remember, a MIDI channel is a way to send discrete information, kind of like a phone call. You send uh, discrete information over just that one phone line and nobody else can hear it. That's what I want to happen here. I want to have each of these on a discrete channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign each of these to their own separate MIDI channel. Now, when I play, I'm only playing this one sound. And so the next question is, well, how do I play each of these individual sounds? Well, each of them has to have their own separate MIDI track or MIDI data. So to do that, we're going to add three additional MIDI tracks to our session. So three MIDI tracks. So now we have a total of four because the instrument track contains within it the capability of recording and playing back one MIDI track. So now we have these additional MIDI tracks that we can use to assign to play these additional instruments. So we can record enable the second MIDI track. We can choose which instrument we want it to play. In this case, we want it to play Expand 2, Instance 1, Channel 2. So Expand 2, Instance number 1, Channel 2. We've record enabled that track, so now when we play the keyboard, it's going to play the bigger legato strings. And this channel, MIDI track, will play Beneath the Waves. Now let's continue on. We want this third track to play the third virtual instrument. Span 2, Instance 1, right there, and Channel 3. Now, same with this fourth track. We want it to be channel 4, so expand to instance 1 and channel 4. Okay, so now, depending on which track we have record enabled, we're going to play different sounds. Now we can do the exact same thing or create the exact same setup but with using an auxiliary input track. So let me demonstrate that for you. So there is our stereo auxiliary input track and now we're going to add four MIDI tracks. We'll go up here. We'll add Expand 2 as a virtual instrument. We can change all these so they're all set up to receive uh, information on their own individual MIDI channel. And then we can just start adding some virtual instruments. And then we can set up each of these individual MIDI tracks to trigger one channel of information. So here we'll go to expand to instance one, channel one, which is beneath the waves. You can see the level right here. And then this one, channel two. And then we'll go to channel three and channel four. So now, depending on which track we have record enabled, it's going to play a different virtual instrument. So that is how you set up virtual instruments using auxiliary and MIDI tracks as well as instrument tracks and MIDI tracks inside of Pro Tools. That's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to actually start recording some MIDI and learning how to edit that data.